Andrea here, and today I'd like to show you Shopify's maintenance task. This is a fantastic Rails engine used to queue and manage maintenance tasks you might have in your Rails apps. I have an application here with about 100,000 posts uh, in there, and one of the common uses you could use this gem for is to do operations on batch collections. So I want to make a task here that will update the published at with time.current so that we can backfill that data. And then, you know, another developer down the road can only show posts that have a published at value field. So to do that, you we can start off by installing maintenance tasks. And I'll just follow the readme where we bundle add the maintenance task gem and then run the install generator. Uh, as a note, this does have an active job dependency. And then further on, if we are going to use the CSV upload, you would want you would need to have active storage installed and configured. So jumping right in, we can just go ahead and start with bundle add maintenance tasks. And then once that finishes, we can run the generator. So we'll run Rails generate maintenance task installs. That creates a route for us in, uh, at slash maintenance task and then runs the migration for us. Then we'll restart our Rails server. So we have the new gym and we can load it up at localhost 3000 and you can see that the task will show up here. So to get started with that, let's just generate our first maintenance task. So we'll do Rails generate maintenance task, uh, task and we'll say this one's gonna be update post published at and that creates an app task folder and puts it inside of a maintenance folder. Now, to get it to show up, we will go ahead and restart our server one more time, and then we can refresh and see our task shows up here. Now, this is just the generated code, so let's go fill it out with some useful information. So collection needs to be an active record relation or an array. In our case, I will go ahead and use a batch of posts. So we'll do post out in batches. And then this process will iterate on a single iteration of the task. So maybe one element of an array or one iteration of the active record batch. And so the important bit here is that it needs to be item potent or able to be processed more than once. If the task is stopped or resumes, um, you want it to be safe to operate there. So just keep that in mind. I'll go ahead and I like to rename element to be like post batch in this case. Um, so that it's clearer here when we say post batch, update all, published at is going to be time.current. And then uh, to show progress, we can also do collection.count here, and that will show the number of batches that we want to operate on. Before I go ahead and run this, I will add a sleep point zero one to slow it down um, so that we can demonstrate the process. So my posts don't have any published at, and if we go ahead and run this, it will start to, it'll enqueue a job and then start to run it. We can pause it, and you can see it, it paused successfully where we then have the option to cancel it or resume it. And in this case, I'm going to uh, resume it. And then I've decided, actually, I wanna cancel it. Um, maybe I thought of something I needed to change, and you can see it also cancels successfully. Um, if you go back to the index, it'll show under completed task, and this now shows the latest state on this view. When I click it again, I'll click run and just let it run all the way through. And you can see on this page as well, you can see the previous runs of the task. And I'm not refreshing, so this is automatically refreshing and showing the updated status. And you can see it just finished successfully. And now on the home page, it shows that it completed successfully. So flipping back over to our app, all of our posts have the published ad sets. Um, I wanna show off the CSV uploading because I found this really neat. And so if I go to my post controller, we'll just flip this to be order um, created at, and we'll say descending. So the newest will be at the very first page, like any good blog. And what we will do then is we need to generate a task for importing the CSVs. So I will do Brit, Ben Rails generate. We'll say this task name is going to be import posts, and I'll pass it the dash dash CSV flag. And then we'll open it up 
import post task and you see this generated slightly different it has this csv collection at the top and then only the process method is needed to be defined here and this is telling us that it will run this code on each specific row of the csv for you so we can just say post creates the title will be row we'll have a header uh, called title and then the body can be row um, body okay and let's go make our csv file that we're going to upload example post.csv and so this will have our title and it also has a body header and so the title will be like this uh is really cool for the title and the body can be gem is super handy let's make another one um so example you know we'll just put, type in a random number there and the body will be something like this uh important to note is you include a new line at the end of the csv file so that it gets parsed correctly and then if we come back to our dashboard for maintenance tasks we can see that our new task showed up here when we click it we'll see that we are able to upload a csv file an important note is your application does need to have active storage installed and configured for this to work properly as it will upload the csv to active storage and rename it for the task run and then it, so i'll select my csv that we created and click run you can see it enqueues a job it also gives you a way to download the CSV that was ran, which is super handy. And if we refresh over here, we can see our two new posts created here. So importing CSVs and processing them gets a whole bunch easier for you. And I think there's a whole bunch of things that this could maybe save a bunch of times uh, for having to do. But there's also the ability to import custom task parameters as well as throttling and if you need to process something that doesn't have a collection like you need to enqueue a background job or contact an api um you can also do that but there's custom task parameters and that's the last thing i want to show off in this video and that would be you can add this to any type of task um and it uses the active uh, the attributes here so it, if you have a string you can do that you can also do an integer for example and so let's just add something here that we want to specify the body um, will be you know updated contents and then we'll have a space and then we'll actually have the row body so maybe that would be like a prefix somebody would be applying to all of our posts for example and then because we've specified that we can come back here and if we refresh the task page for this you can see it still asks us for a csv but it's also asking us for our updated content um so we can say you know this was typed in first um it's gonna also run validations here so you didn't up i didn't up update the csv file so it's telling us it needs to be updated as well as if you, for example, don't pass in updated content, you can require those for your tasks to be ran. Let's go ahead and fill this out. This was typed in first and run that. It gives you a nice history of the arguments you pass in as well. So you can see exactly what was passed to the task and that is super handy. And now if we refresh, you can see created those records for us. So maintenance task is a really cool uh, Gem, it has callbacks as well. So maybe you need to do Slack notifications or something similar. Um, you can create those. I would encourage you to check it out. It is super handy, especially for um, reducing the need of needing to put some of those things. You might do backfills in your Rails DB migrations. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody.